Welcome back, everybody. This is episode two of After the Bell with the one and only Jeff Meacham. I just sent it a really fucking kiss go once again, so <sighs> deflate the ego a little bit. Thank you all so much for the positive response last week, and thank you all for the last, I think it's been two hours since I put that post up. The response has been overwhelming. I got former spring questions, I got tweets, I got Facebook inboxes, I got people posting on the wall, which I'll say right now. If you want to send me a question that you want on the show, put it in the inbox. If it's going on the wall, there's a bunch of shit on my wall. I don't read half of it, to be fair. I got a lot of friends. So if you want me to, if you want to get my attention for the show, inbox me on Facebook at JD Meach One. All right. These first questions come from Form Spring. This one is from a guy who didn't identify himself, but he wants to know my thoughts on poultry, since he didn't want, I didn't want wrestling questions. Poultry. I like chicken. Chicken's a good di good dish, you know. I, I love me. We talked about it on Stat Boy Show. I love me some chicken soup. Some chicken soup. Um, what else is poultry? Just chicken, right? <laughs> I don't know. Chicken's good, man. Chicken goes in anything. Chicken fettuccine Alfredo is bomb, though. Except at Denny's. Don't get into Denny's. This is from Ed Swoggle. I was just wondering if you've seen in the new No DQ and AV show on the CAW channel, and if you have, any personal animosities aside, what did you really think of it? I did happen to watch the first couple of videos he did after my departure. I will, I will not deny that I watched him because it was interesting to see Aaron's face. It, it, it's been ten years almost, and Aaron has always been the one to be quiet in the background or be quiet behind the camera. But he has chosen now, after my departure, to finally step out and do his own thing. And I'll be honest with you, I'm proud of him. He's realized that he's got the talent to do stuff like this. He can do it. And the first couple of videos, I, the, the people saying that he's dry, he has no, you know, like charisma or whatever. Aaron, when he gets wound up enough about a topic, he will blow you guys away. I encourage you guys to watch him. Just don't watch him more than me. Okay. Let's see. Another person that I didn't have... You guys, guys, ID, ID yourselves on Formspring. I want to give you guys credit for these. In case it goes dark. Do you think there's any chance of Drew McIntyre ever getting a big main event push or Aaron putting his head through the goddamn door in the middle of a taping? <laughs> of Drew McIntyre getting a main event push or even getting back in the mid-card title hunt. Um, if they're smart, Drew McIntyre should be IC champion by this time Tuesday. Drew McIntyre is awesome. We met him at Access both days. Guy was a freaking awesome person. And, of course, we had to clean Jade up after she met him. But uh, that was okay because he's a, he's, a, he's a handsome man. He's a handsome foreigner at that. So, you, you go, girlfriend. Um... Drew's cool. I've always liked Drew. I, I like the whole Chosen One gimmick. I think he deserves to be the Chosen One. Vince is high on him, and there's no doubt why. He should be Intercontinental Champion. He should be World Champion soon. Not, so, not too soon, because he's not there yet. Then I said that about Dolph Ziggler, and he's World Champion all this year. So We'll see what happens there. Okay. Colton Roberts 3. Why did Stone Cold Steve Austin never get the Undisputed Championship in 2002, and practically all the main event stars did? He left the company. He was feuding with the NWO. He was feuding with Ric Flair. And he was bitching the whole time. Go back and watch The Best of Confidential Volume 1. There, even though there's only one volume of that. <laughs> Great DVD. And the first story on there talks about the departure of Stone Cold Steve Austin from WWE in 2002. He had been bitching since, like, mania about the direction of his character. Are you really going to put somebody that's bitching that much with the championship? No! As much as it is Stone Cold Steve Austin, you don't give the title to a guy that's bitching about his status. You make him realize that you are not the end-all, be-all, dude, even if you are Stone Cold Steve motherfucking Austin. That's why. All right, let's see what else. I just went dark, because this thing is, has no time. Come on. There we go. This is from Joe Barton. Hey, Jeff, what do you think the is plan for Mark Henry? Seems to be on the downslope of his career. I'm going to spoil SmackDown. Is that okay with both y'all in the room? Sorry about that. Okay. Mark Henry won a 20-man battle royal on SmackDown Friday night to become the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. Like I said after SummerSlam, the winner of the Sheamus Mark Henry match was going to be the top guy going against whoever was the champion after SummerSlam. Lo and behold, Nostradamus Meacham was correct again. And that's exactly what's going to happen now. 
So, and I think that while he's at the tail end of his career somewhat, because he's been there for 16 years, guys, that's a long time for anybody to be in the WWE. And he may get the shot at Night of Champions, but I don't think he'll win the gold. He was ECW champion for a little bit, and that was like his little thank you token, and that's still a world championship, I don't care what you dumb fucks in WWE say, but he won't get the world heavyweight championship. This is from Monocle Dragon, we're on Twitter now, which I can get on my phone now, because my phone's fucking awesome. Do you know the, happen to know the status of the Kings of Wrestling or Colt Cabana, and if they are officially signed by WWE? Well, depending on when this is go up, we're going to talk about the KOW on Renegade or Dads or whatever we do. The Dads that we're going to do, Dads, uh, Renegade. Okay, Jay's going to talk about it on Renegade if he hasn't already. I don't know what day we're on because I'm fucking sleep deprived. So, Jay's going to talk about Bola, Battle of Los Angeles. He'll talk about the Kings. I'm sure. My personal opinion is that they are signed. That's how I feel. I firmly believe they are bagged and ready to debut and like that has been talked about they're going to go straight to the main roster and I even asked Chris Hero to please drop John on his head if he does show up. Shake things up. So we'll see what happens with Hero, Castagnoli, and Colt Cabana. I would love to see all three of those guys on the main roster tomorrow night on Raw if it does happen. Okay, now we're on to Facebook, and all y'all went crazy on Facebook. I put that fucking post up. I got like 12 questions, so we'll see how many I can get through in the time that I have. This is from Ross Taylor on Facebook. Who are the most underrated and overrated wrestlers, past and present? Well, earlier in the week, I got a form spring question saying that they felt that Shelton Benjamin was overrated, and I fucking disagree with that wholeheartedly. Shelton Benjamin was so underrated... Uh, actually, no, they said he was underrated, and I said, no, he was just underutilized, because they gave Shelton Benjamin the ball, and he ran with it as hard as he could for being where he was in the company. Shelton Benjamin was underutilized, but he was not underrated. Overrated, my list of that starts every single time with Lex Luger and Sid Vicious. And you can talk to Ric Flair and guys like that about those two. Lex Luger was given the moon on a platter. And his ego got in the way. The big football star couldn't handle it. And Sid Vicious stabbed a legend and broke his own stupid leg by being retarded. <laughs> End of story. Great guy. Did a great interview for me in Extreme Mayhem. But since that era is dead, I can be a dick to that era. Fuck it. You brought Top Gun on me already? It's only the second episode, fool. I forgot my little sound thing too. See, that's why you did. Cause I don't have my little sound toy with me. Next episode, we're gonna have some. We're gonna have some sound bites. All right. Anyway, let's see. This is from Shane McCann or Hazard F5. Out of these wrestlers, which do you see winning the World Heavyweight or WWE Championships, and who will be future endeavored first? Of Drew McIntyre, Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, Dolph Ziggler, Kofi Kingston, and Wade Barrett. Well. This is how WWE has trained us. Like, we're not supposed to believe that Chris Benoit existed. Dolph Ziggler was a World Heavyweight Champion this year. For about a week. He beat Edge by disqualification in a match where, if Edge was by disqualification, he would become the World Heavyweight Champion. Dolph was World Champion officially in the record books from that SmackDown to the next SmackDown. Teddy stripped him, Edge won it back. So Dolph's already on the list of people that have won the championship. Of the rest of the guys you mentioned next, I gotta go back to Drew McIntyre or Wade Barrett. One of those two will be the next world champion of the guys you mentioned on your list. As far as future endeavored, I'm not going to say any of them personally. I'm, that, that's probably a sh uh, chicken shit answer and you guys are probably crapping me for that, but I don't see any of those guys getting fired for any reason. There's no reason to fire any of those guys. They're all young, good looking guys, no homo, that have so much talent in this business and are hungry and they just want it so bad, they shouldn't get fired. Dan DeGosta, do you think WWE will bring back King of the Ring? If, if you can't turn the phone off during the taping, dude, don't bring it in here, please. Please. Do you think WWE will bring back King of the Ring as a pay-per-view, and what is your KOTR dream card? I get these dream card questions all the time from a lot of y'all, and for me to do a dream card would take an entire episode, because I'd be talking about the match I want, the analysis of the match, the outcome of the match, the aftermath of the match, I'd go fucking crazy on it. So that'll be a later date. 
King of the Ring come back as a pay-per-view? No. King of the Ring, you like to dust off the, the, the crown and the throne every couple of years on Raw or SmackDown and let, you know, Regal get it or Sheamus get it or whatever, and then let the guy's career go in the fucking tank after. Notice, King of the Ring, Booker won the World Championship, and that was the right thing to do. King Regal did jack shit after. King Sheamus jobbed for like six months after. Fucking useless. King of the Ring is useless unless they're going to do what they did with Booker, what they did with Brett, what they did with Owen, Mabel even, like Stone Cold, my God. He didn't even care that he was King of the Ring, but the fact that he won that tournament and cut that promo launched a whole new fucking era in the business. People forget that. That that speech was at King of the Ring. They just see Austin cutting a promo on. Who did he cut it on? Does anybody remember that? Jake no. The Jake the Snake Roberts. Thank you, Aaron. Nobody remembers that of the C Nation. Because they're not trained to. All we see is Doc Hendricks, Michael Hayes, for those of you who don't know, interviewing Stone Cold and him cutting the promo. And that's all we're supposed to know. Because Jake Roberts is a washed-up drug addict who doesn't belong in WWE anymore. Because, you know, there was no King of the Ring. King of the Ring was lame and not stupid. Fucking idiots. John Perrier. Sorry, John. Fuck. Perrier? Perrier? Perrier. We'll call him John Perrier Water. That's your new name. John Perrier Water. Great show. Do you think we will see a John Cena heel turn when or if we see the PG crap go away since he is more for the young fans? JJ, help me out with this answer behind the camera. How many goddamn times have we talked about John Cena turning heel? Too fucking many. Thank you. As long as there is a Mattel deal, the toys that make Barbie and Ken... John will be a baby face. They don't want their meal ticket to go be bad. I'm t- being told three minutes remaining, so we'll see what we do. That's long. Okay, Ben Gourlay. If Kevin Nash is revealed to be the Raw General Manager, backed by Stephanie McMahon, going back to JJ's conspiracy theory, do you see this as a change in direction for the company? Nash isn't known exactly for being a PG character, and adding that with a segment between Punk and Nash last week, along with everything else Punk has done, I get the feeling this is the end of the PG era and venturing into a new era with a bit of an edge. Your thoughts? Nash will not be the GM. If Nash will not have that sort of power attached to him, he is simply the assassin. Stephanie is the marionette, if that's the case. Stephanie's the puppet master. And she's the one trying to get the McMahons back in power, if that's the case. And Triple H and Stephanie will have a power struggle, which would be fucking awesome. Trevor Super Swayze, just curious to know if you've ever heard of the female wrestler anti-diva Caitlin Demon or not. Diamond or not. In passing, I've heard of her. You'll have to send me some more information. I will look her up, and I will talk about her in a future episode. I just didn't have the time today. I, but I, I have heard of her in passing. Love to have her in wild. More, more girls in wild, the better. But we'll see. Let's see. I don't like that question. Sorry. Don't like that one either. There we go. Robert Cavaros. Hey, Jeff. Big funnier you're all your shows. Punk shoot promo on Raw got me thinking. What is your favorite promo in WWE history? <laughs> and CM Punk in Vegas, dude. Because we were there. Me, Jay, Mikey, and everybody's favorite person, Ray Larkin, were up in the cheap seats, and Punk sat himself down and turned the goddamn business on its head. Kayfabe or not, and we've all been told it is a kayfabe by everybody's favorite insider, um, that it's a work, but you know what? It got people fucking talking. That is my all-time favorite promo, and everything Punk has done since then has been awesome. That is going to do it for this week. I'm sorry I didn't get to Jeff and... Keon, and I think that was it. Uh, you guys didn't get to that I wanted to get to. We will address you guys next week. For J.J. Williams running the camera, for my laughing man in the audience, Aaron Austin, this is Jeff Meacham saying we'll see you next week on After the Bell.